Well, hello everybody. You might notice my fancy new office. Not fancy yet, but it will be because my amazing wife, Tanya, actually uh, gave me her office and she got it like painted in this beautiful, rich, luxurious paint. So I'm super grateful. So uh, getting everything tuned up, you know, getting decorate and stuff, but uh, yeah, I just feel pretty comfortable in here. And it's nice to be up from the basement after 11 years. So yeah, the, the, the basement dweller has arisen. Anyways, I want to talk about uh, the idea that your BFF is, you know, hiding right in front of you. It's in the mirror, right? So, uh, you know, it's very, very easy. Like one of the mistakes we make is when things are not going the way we want, we blame other people. We externalize uh, our experience. We make it about the other person. There's always something they're doing wrong or it's a situational thing. Um, you know, it's just a natural tendency we have, right? And so the thing is, though, the, the ability to look at yourself in the mirror and be honest about who's staring back at you is one of the most challenging but rewarding and effective uh, practices you can do to just get better and be able to better affect positive change. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit today about emotional intelligence, EQ. Okay, and and why it's so important. You know, it's interesting. There's like lots of studies about emotional intelligence, but one study was they looked at, you know, you know, exceptional managers or exceptional leaders and, and average leaders and 90% of the difference, 90% of the difference was made up uh, was as a result of EQ. Our EQ accounted for 90% of the difference. It's kind of a big deal, right? So let's talk about uh, the four pillars of EQ. That's really what I wanted to get across today, right? So four pillars of EQ are self awareness and actually my wife might come in and ask me to unload the groceries from Costco so I'm gonna get this done as quickly as possible because I am aware enough to know that I need, I need to be available for that okay self-awareness so what does that mean it means your ability to understand what is going on inside of you right to be able to like understand your emotional experience your and to be able to label it at a granular level so to have the ability to say instead of saying like I'm mad to say like uh, you know I feel frustrated because of XYZ you know XYZ Canadian XYZ you know a lot of times with men uh, are are charged emotions you know they show up as anger uh, with women, this is a huge generalization. It can tend to be sadness, right? So to be able to like be self-aware enough to like peel, get beneath the surface and understand what is actually going on inside of us is a huge, huge, uh, you know, very important skill to, to be able to develop and to be able to navigate your own emotions. Okay, so self-awareness. Number two is self-regulation. Okay, self-regulation. So another way of saying about that is, can I create more space between stimulus and response? So people that get like triggered, you know, I hate that word, but people that get triggered, pff, man, low self-regulation. So you wanna create space between stimulus and response. And for anybody that's read Man's uh, Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, great book. And that's what he talks about, right, is, is that, um, you know, in the space between stimulus response and response lies our ability to choose. And it's in that space that, that where freedom waits, right? Because the more space we create, the more intentional we can be about how we want to respond to whatever happened. And when we give our space, uh, give ourselves space to respond, we tend to make better, more effective choices. Okay. So that's number two. So self-awareness, self-regulation. Number three is social awareness. Here's my wife coming in. Oh, she saw me on this video. I walked away. So I gotta, I gotta wrap this up quick because I gotta do the groceries. Okay, social awareness. That's, other, that's another example of social awareness. But it's basically understanding the impact our words and actions have on other people. <clears throat> so people with low social awareness are like the close talkers. Hey man, how's it going, you know? Uh, how's the house game last night? You know, and you're like, oh my God, get away from me. And you're like, you know, you're, you're pulling back from them or you're like subtly pulling back from them and they don't even realize it. Or people that ramble on so long, kind of like I might be doing right now, uh, and don't really realize that people are like impatient and they're shifting or they're like slowly edging towards the door so they can get out of there. Those are people with low social awareness. So having a good understanding of how your words and actions impact other people. One of the best ways to do that is to ask. Right, because a lot of times we have blind spots, right? So one of the things that people say to me 
is that sometimes my intensity when I get like excited about something can come across as like they interpret it as anger. So that's something I'm working on, right? I had, but I had to ask the questions like uh, in order to be able to find that out. So social awareness. And then lastly is relationship management. So how good am I at creating and nurturing mutually beneficial relationships with other people? Okay, relationships are what make the world go round, right? So are you the type of person that's always looking to connect with people, looking for to, you know, to use your strengths, skills, passions, uh, connections to serve them in some way? Uh, or do you, in your, you know, in your work, do you rely on like positional authority to try to get things done, for example, right? So your ability to, you know, empathize with people, connect with people, build mutually beneficial relationships with them is also hugely important. So that is what I wanted to share today, the four pillars of EQ. But the main thing is, is that looking at yourself in the mirror and being honest about who is staring back at you is a way to develop all of those skills. Because also when you think about relationship management, your relationship with yourself is the number one most important fundamental relationship. Okay, so whenever you are finding yourself in a situation that either you don't like or even one that you like, ask yourself the question, how did I contribute to this? You know, or if you are find yourself in an emotionally charged situation and you want to react, ask yourself the question, like, what is it about this that is causing me to have this emotional experience or causing me to want to like snap, right? Or ask yourself, like, if people are, you're not building the types of relationships you want with people, ask yourself, why? What am I doing? What role am I playing? It's much easier to blame other people. It's much more, like, again, challenging and also rewarding and, and uh, effective to be able to look in the mirror and just, again, be honest about who you see staring back at you. So your best friend is um, waiting for you right in the mirror, okay? Your BFF, boom, that is your competitive advantage. The better, the more you develop your EQ, the more successful you're gonna be at home, the more successful you're gonna be in your business, okay? Hope you enjoy.